Okay, so we're dealing with a Wayne Dalton garage door here, and basically what happened was an accident. And what we're going to do is we're going to reset the door because this cable has come off on this side. And one of the ways we're going to do that is by resetting that drum with the cable, making sure that the door's all straight. We're going to try and get this track straight because it is bent. And it's just a, a lot of things we're going to try and do to get this door salvaged. So that way we don't have to worry about replacing the door. Nevertheless, they do need to think about getting a new door in the future. Let's party. So I don't have my wireless mic today, so hopefully I can get somewhat of good audio in here. But um, we're going to go ahead and start with getting this cable back in set. So, so I'm going to get my vice grips first. And basically with these vice grips, I'm going to make sure that the door is sustained open and get into that corner. Of course, I don't want to damage the door more. I got my door stamp up there. Very good. All right, so then we can loosen that drum. So we got to loosen this drum in order to get the cable back over on it. There we go. One of them open. A little tight corner there, so we'll have to get a different wrench. Ooh, it's a little bit of tension coming off of that spring. Our drum is loose now. Very good. So basically we want our drum loose like that. And now the cable's fallen, but we'll be able to reset that. And we can come on this other side just because it's got a little bit more leverage. Just for safety, I'm still keeping my vice grip on. I've got my door stand to make sure that the door does try and fall. Again, you can tell how much our tube has walked over. It has moved at least about an inch and a half, almost two inches right there. And this is where our, this piece right here should be where the drum is at inside this bearing. But it moved over, so that means we're gonna need to do a lot of adjusting as we work on this door. Make sure our vice grip is still tight. I usually like to keep the thimble up and over. There we go. Now that we have better leverage, we're going to be making sure that our cable is tight. Normally, and I'm, I prefer to do this with two springs, but with one spring, like you can tell, the torsion tube walked over. And that's not a good sign. I don't think they need a new spring because it still looks to be intact, but it's going to be a challenge to get the door right. Make sure you don't get it caught in the vice grip like I did right there. That is a good pro tip. Would have made for a better video, just in case the door falls. I'm just going to tighten it up a tad. This will allow us to get the door down safely. There we go. I don't want that tube to come out of the bearing on the other side. Okay. All right. Got that. Still going to have to re-bend this out. You can tell how that's bent, so I have to straighten that out right there. Uh, it'd be nice if I had a door anvil. Uh, we got these great door anvils that Damco makes, but I don't have one. First, what I really need to do is I need to get this roller back up in there. I always want to be safe. You can just bend this track, but because um, I don't know how bad my tube is out of, falling out from over there, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take off these screws. And I'm just going to make sure that our uh, roller gets on there. So our tube is still in here, which is fine, but getting the door to close is still tricky because of safety. You know, I'm, I'm going to close the door, but if this tube was not in there, then I probably would not try and close it the way I'm doing it right now. But I need to get the door down so that way I can reset the tube and everything. Garage door accidents or issues like the one in this video happen on a daily basis. One of the reasons why they happen so often is because of the photo safety eyes or the safety reversing sensors. These OEM sensors are fundamentally flawed. Normal garage door sensors are installed only six inches above the floor on the garage door tracks. At that placement, they can't defend against open trunks, protruding bumpers, or high trailer hitches. That's why we recommend Infinity Shield. Infinity Shield is the next level garage door safety reversing sensor. Their sensor covers the entire spectrum of the garage door opening. It's literally an infinite shield of protection that can detect any obstruction. Infinity Shield can provide you protection from your garage door damaging your car. The best part, it can be installed in minutes. The setup is easy for pros and even DIYers.
Thus, if you're ready to upgrade your garage door safety sensor needs, then visit the link below and a big thanks to Infinity Shield for sponsoring this video. Okay, so at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and bring her down and hopefully she doesn't pop out. Excellent, okay. So we got her closed. Looks like the spring walked over. I'm curious, we opened it up. Oh yeah, see, see how our cable uh, and our drum is now on this side. So I'm just basically gonna reset everything. There's, there's just no reason to leave the way it is. Let me get some light on this. You can see how it's moved over, so we don't want that. We've got a single spring, spring still looks good. And it walked over, so obviously if the door opens up, the, the tube is gonna walk back this way again. And we don't want that. So the remedy will obviously be loosen the tension, reset your drums and cables. I'm gonna straighten this out first and then, uh, yeah, call it a day, hopefully. Okay, let's try to get this as straight as possible. And usually I like to make sure that my tracks are straight here. We can see that it's a little bit slanted, but our set screws, or I should say our lag screws, are still in. So that doesn't move at all. This side was not bent and this is good. So we'll just start taking the tension off there. Now normally, you can just loosen the screws, right? Okay. You see, that loosens your drums and your cables. You could leave it like this. You could leave it like that, you know? And reset everything. I think what I would like to do I'd like to take the tube a little bit forward that way. I'd like to move the tube more. Yeah, because we don't have a lot on this side. So I'm gonna take off all the tension. That way I can move those tubes. And safety first, so don't be in the uh, line of sight of the torsion bars. It's not safe. A lot of torque behind that spring. You don't want to get hit in the face. All right, so there's no tension on that spring, which is a good thing. Now we can basically loosen up the drums, move the tube over. Let's loosen up these drums here. Oh yeah, see how the, the tube was just walking over like that? You don't want it to walk. Now in the same fashion, we're gonna add tension to our spring. We're gonna stay away from the line of the tension. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, to eight. 28 quarter turns. Give it a little bit more lift. I'm gonna tighten. Make sure the vice grip's still on there tight. Tight there. Here. Damn. And you can tell there's tension because now our vice grip has just slightly lifted up now. So we should be able to lift the door with ease. So now we've reset the drums and we've retightened the spring. We reset the cables. We've done pretty much everything that we need to do to make this job, I should say this garage door, working safe. So now the moment of truth, I'm gonna open up the door now. Yeah, it's a little bottom heavy, but I think it's gonna be okay. Okay, so what I'm having to do is add a little bit more turns. I put my vice grip back up. And basically, I need to keep tension to the cables and to the drums, so that way I can add, I would say, probably another full turn, and we should be okay. Just don't want to make this door too bottom heavy. I want to give it some good balance, so that way they don't have troubles with it in the future. Much better balance. Okay, so we got this garage door working up and running. We ended up basically 
resetting those drums, cables, the spring, so that's good now. Um, we also added this ORB bracket right there. By the way, this is one of my favorite LiftMaster garage door openers, the 8355. It was their AC P3 motor, but gosh, it was so quiet, as you can tell, coming down. In addition to that, we also straightened this track a little bit, well, as straight as possible. Had to put some body weight on that. So we were able to salvage this door. We were able to get this customer up and running. I think this is a really good example that the hatchback or trunks to your vehicles are closed before operating the door. And a situation like this would be perfect for the Infinity Shield safety sensors because those Infinity Shield safety sensors are ideal when you're looking at the most optimal, the highest level of security, or I should say safety, for your garage door closing. Because if there's anything in the path of those sensors, trust me, that door will not close. And it could have prevented a situation like this. But hey, we were able to get it taken care of. If you're interested in the Infinity Shield product, there's links down below. In fact, let's go ahead and keep this party going. Check out one of these videos right here. As always, I wanna thank y'all for partying with me. Y'all stay safe.